from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Cardinal Collins. This Mass is the Sarah Foundation of Canada Mass to pray for the intentions of the donors. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the generosity of the Sarah Foundation of Canada and Sarah Canada Council, together with all 18 Canadian Sarah Clubs. The Sarans are lay Catholics, men and women of all ages and from all walks of life, dedicated to promoting and affirming priestly and religious vocations. An important part of the Sarah Club mission is to pray for new and existing vocations to the priesthood. We thank all who use the Sarah Foundation of Canada Mass cards and for your ongoing support for vocations to the priesthood and consecrated religious life. Today we continue our week of Masses for prayers for vocations and we remember the important role each of us has in offering our prayers for those discerning their call and that they remain open to following Jesus. For Sarans worldwide, for parents, grandparents, religious teachers, and for all who help shape their lives, the lives of our young people, we pray that we can follow the prayerful example of Mary, our Blessed Mother, as we pray. O Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus and Our Lady of Good Counsel, this week the Daily TV Mass community commends those seeking and living their spiritual vocations. Assist them to answer yes to the divine call, as you did at the invitation of the angel. Draw them near to your heart so that they can understand the joy that awaits them when they answer your son's call to be witnesses of his love in the world. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your as we prepare now to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the font of baptism have made new those who believe in you, Keep safe those reborn in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Now as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down and also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showered her to be, showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed 
in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe 
and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In this Easter time, we are called by the church to reflect upon our mission as disciples of the risen Lord. That's one reason so much of the, many of the readings are taken from the Acts of the Apostles, where we see the early church in action. And we think of that especially in these days, because during this time, we also reflect upon particularly, particular missions of ministry and service in the church, of religious uh, sisters and brothers, of, of deacons, of priests, and others called to those particular vocations of service and apostolic ministry. And so as we do so, we, we reflect upon the foundation of our mission as disciples given to us in baptism and confirmation, and also in the particular grace and the mission that is given through religious profession and particularly through ordination. And there are two themes that come to us in these readings. First of all, pastoral love and care, and secondly, Eucharistic faith. In the first reading, we see the pastoral care of St. Peter as he heals the one who is in need. And we think of the way in which uh, priests are called to heal the soul and through by instruments of God's mercy and grace in the sacrament of reconciliation, but also to bring healing and comfort through the sacrament of the sick. And we see Lydia and uh, Dorcas, uh, Tabitha, who is there, a very faithful laywoman and her friends around her. And she, but she and all of them were involved very much in the mission of lay discipleship. And we see also the way in which they called upon the apostle Peter to come to be with her and how he brought her back to life. It is pastoral care, pastoral love that is one of the foundations in our life, whatever our vocation may be, as disciples of the risen Lord. And at the heart of it all is our Eucharistic faith. In the Gospel of St. John, we don't have the detailed description, this is my body, this is my blood that we find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but we have at the Last Supper, but we have in chapter six of John, the greatest description and most profound proclamation of the real presence of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Here we find the bread of life. Here we find him speaking to us and the reality of the one we encounter in the Holy Eucharist. And then and now, that made some people walk away. They did not accept that Eucharistic faith. And so he said to the apostles, the disciples, do you also want to walk away? And Peter says, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And that Eucharistic faith is the foundation of our life in Christ as lay disciples or as those who are engaged in the consecrated life or in, through ordination. This is the foundation of our life and we proclaim that. And we pray in these days, especially if the Lord said one thing about vocations, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send labors into the harvest. And I'd like to tell you about something that happened uh, many years ago in the United States there was a group of lay people gathered together to pray before the Lord. This was their initiative. It wasn't the bishop or a priest told them to do it. They had this apostolic initiative. When the bishop heard about it, he was delighted. And he met with them and they asked him, what would you like us to pray for? And he said, how about vocations to the priesthood and religious life? And he suggested they take as their heavenly patron, St. Junipero Serra, who was just canonized a short time ago. He wasn't canonized at the time it was founded. And this is the beginning of the Serra clubs, which now are throughout the world, Serra International, and in our own country, we have us, the Canada, the Serra Council of Canada. So this is a great example of pastoral love and founded in the need to have the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist through the priesthood of Jesus Christ made present amongst us. And this is lay men and women who are engaged in the one thing above all that the Lord said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest. And also many other initiatives which are extremely important in building up a culture of vocations and in making it possible for this Eucharistic reality to be present within the church. And so we have, uh, it occurs to me in our own country, we have uh, 18 Sarah clubs. I think we should have at least 1800, but that's not for me to do. The bishop didn't create the Sarah club, the lay people did. And then they of course in touch with the bishop and then indeed this is approved by the Holy Father. 
but it starts with the lay initiative, and that's something I would just, I leave it in your hands. There we are. Let's pray the Lord, the Lord of the harvest, to send labors into the harvest and to encourage lay people to support this in many ways. And I particularly commend the Sarah Club. And so we do this. We know he has the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that he is the Holy One of God. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. This is what gives us strength in the midst of a world which has so many troubles and difficulties. As we're on our way through the valley of tears, homeward bound to the heavenly city, Jerusalem, this is what we pray for. And we are strengthened and encouraged by the grace of God in the midst of this great mission. And we pray to the Lord of the harvest to send many laborers into the harvest. And now let us pray. With faith and confidence, we now bring our prayers through the intercession of Our Lady of Good Counsel to God our Father, who sent his Son to be our Good Shepherd and to lay down his life for us in love and service. For those who have asked to be remembered in the daily TV Mass prayer and intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions of all Sarans and in thanksgiving for their ongoing prayers for vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. During this week of masses for prayers for vocations, we pray for an increase in vocations for the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all existing vocations, for priests, sisters, brothers, and permanent deacons, that they may remain always faithful to the ministry that they have received, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an end to war in Ukraine and the Middle East and all other places of conflict around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of your people who praise you for your care. Through these prayers of intercession, may we never grow indifferent to the needs of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to receive us and accept the sacrifice we offer you. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received and attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Then even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, our Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Amen. now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We gather.